People respond differently when you pull them out after doing a rescue. Some people respond to being rescued in ways you just never imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Almost there. Oh, yeah. Almost there. It's just gotten worse. It's just getting worse. Once we had a mass rescue go down, that was the final straw. Like after that point, it was it was time to close the beach. Yeah, just attention, guys. We're just we're gonna pull the flag down. Steaming the beach too dangerous at the moment to swim. If you wanna have a swim, you're free to go up to the pool here. There's two pools. Conditions are ultra dangerous this afternoon. Beach is closed. 5 p.m. and the beach is closed, meaning swimming is no longer permitted. It's a reminder, swimmers, to come back to shore and move across the But the job's not over for the lifeguards. Hey, boys, come straight back to shore. Yep, you. Come back to the beach. Hey, man, with your feet on the bodyboard. Yep, bring him straight in, mate. That's it, buddy. Straight in. The straight megaphone in. symphony echoes through the evening. Come back to the beach. But astonishingly, some people continue to tempt fate. Hey, boys. Hey, come back to shore. Hey. The men's swimming styles reveal a lot about their abilities. It's incredibly frustrating as a lifeguard to have people ignore your advice, which is directed at their own safety. Come on. Hey! Come in! Come on! Get out of the water. Yeah, mate. We're calling you from in there, mate. You just got to get out, mate. Straight out. Yeah, yeah. Despite repeated advice, the men, both from the UK, don't want to hear the message. You know, this where you started, started here and you ended up at... I thought it was normal. That's no. not normal, mate. You were seconds from disaster, trust us. We see it every day and you were... You I, was, I was in Australia there. I was like, I felt I was in... Well, why didn't you come? We were yelling at you and... Because I was talking to my mate. Mate. Honestly. Mate. You're not fine, mate. Just take our advice. Thanks, man. Thanks for you. People turn around and they, and they come in and they say they were fine. It's just frustrating. We're in the tower. We've got our eyes on these tourists. We took our eye off the water for about 10 seconds. We look back. Next minute, there's 20 of them all stuck in the rip. They've drifted out of the flags, and they're in trouble. That kid's going to the back. He's going to be swallowing some water this boat. Yeah, go, Luke. Go, go, go. Oh, there goes another one. Go, beauty. Just standing up a little bit, but then he drowns in about two seconds, and then he comes back up. I'm paddling out, and I mean the seconds now between us getting to them and them going under. I get to the guy, get him on the board, and unfortunately, they jump on feet first in the coffin position. I was on the binoculars, I could see their facial expressions. Some of them are laughing. <laughs> I don't know what they were laughing at, but something was pretty funny, apparently. <laughs> Maybe they were happy to be alive. Hey, boys, come straight in. Not funny, straight to shore, you can't swim. Sometimes it's a bit beyond the head scratcher for us. Without a doubt, it aggravates me that people laugh when they almost die. Half of them are laughing because they got in, but the other two, their mates, pretty much are drowning and they don't even realise. Oh, Louie, Louie, Louie! It's a Korean church group and they either had God on their side today or they were just lucky that the lifeguards were doing a good job. Almost there! Almost there! <laughs> It can't be common sense that makes you laugh. It's got to be pure embarrassment. People go and swimming when they have no idea. Some were nearly drowning. They thought it was the funniest thing ever. Drowning at Bondi is definitely not a laughing matter, especially for the lifeguards. <laughs> Mid-afternoon, and Luke is having no response from a group of kids swimming towards a rip. I was sitting down on the rip and I could see what was going to happen, trying to megaphone them across to get 
keep going back onto the other side of the bank because they they were just drifting into the massive rip. That group of swimmers in front of me here, guys, go across. You are in the rip. Go across before you get dragged out. They didn't want to listen. They were kind of, you know, yahooing and just not not paying attention. Next minute, they were in the rip. These guys are swimming on a sandbank near backpackers. Luke's tried to direct them back to the bank and it swung exactly the opposite way and just swam straight into a howling rip of backies. If the boys follow Luke's instructions, a rescue is avoidable. Reedy and Singlets, both off duty, are instinctively drawn toward the escalating problem of six people in trouble. I'm just down here having a swim. Also, singlets day off, yeah? We like to hang it. Well, it's the beach. Who doesn't love coming to the beach on their day off? So, unfortunately, when you're a lifeguard, whether you're on duty or off duty, you're always working. I walk into the tower, and like Bondi does, it just erupts. Singlet said to me, should we go? And I went, who knows? <laughs> Another off-duty lifeguard, Mario, who is on his lunch break, joins the chase. The boys have left the girl on her own further out. Luke is anchored down by two of the boys hanging onto his board. Reedy backs up. Luke drags his three onto the sandbank. The others finally follow the instructions they were given earlier on the megaphone. Singlets and Mario stand down. As soon as they're safe, some of the boys are emboldened with an attitude change Reedy does not appreciate. Even then, once we got the other ones in, they'd quickly forgotten how much, you know, panic and and trouble they were in. At least one of the group recognises the seriousness of the situation. All of a sudden, like, I feel couldn't touch the ground, and then all the boys were going up front, and I'm like, guys, help. Like, I don't think I can get out. Help, help. It was horrible. I thought I was going to die. Half of us got caught in it, and then they needed to get rescued back. You could yeah. swim. I swam back, but then we had to go back for the girl, and they just left her. It was funny, but, you know. How was that funny? You can't leave go. I didn't die. I swear to God, we're just drowning. I swear to God, we didn't say anything. All that always happening is just waves over our head. Just... Oh. That was my butt. Well, I'm not doing that again. You know, not everyone follows the rules and swims in the flags. It gets frustrating when just when there's a lot of people down here and you know you don't want to devote your time to people who are wasting it. Yeah, fellas, be very careful. Don't go much further than that. Stay in place. It's really not a swimming area, it's a board riding area. Thank you. Haiti's from that era, I think they call it the school of hard knocks. I'm not cute. I've never been cute, mate. In this job, the hardest thing for me is keeping my cool. Come back to the beach, mate. Do not swim here. Just come straight back to the beach. See the sign on the beach? Do not swim here. I explained to him that it was a dangerous current. Do not swim here. You go out on that bank, next minute you're in the hole, you'll be out to sea. And I said, look, you know what we call this place? Backpackers rip. And they all laughed. I said, don't swim here. Go up on the sandbag, 50 metres up here. I've just driven away, turned around to look at the particular people, and there they are, straight in the same spot that I told them not to swim. Now, folks, I want you in. Now, I just explained to you, now you've gone straight into that current. Come back to the beach now. Come back in now. I just explained to you. No. H doesn't like it when people don't listen to him, and I wouldn't want to be those people when H gets a hold of them. H is heading in uh, now for, for the chip. Uh, and backpackers. I look and I see these two girls are going out to sea, straight in the same spot that I told them not to swim. Just I'm ducking under waves, and I see one of them being picked up by a girl uh, on a board. And then behind her, I could see her friend with no assistance. Those two girls are 
two, three foot swell out there. Paige has been on the megaphone to these people for the last 10 minutes and they ignored him and uh, two of them had to be rescued. Grabbed her, calmed her down, got her on the board. It was gnarly, gnarly backpackers. Well, I get back to the beach and I'm trying to be on top of it, but the Taurus bull, the horns are up and I'm livid. Sort of like, all right, out that way. No, no. I told you not to go anywhere near that. Oh. Leave us on. Hey, that's what's happening. He's in the station. He's losing it down there. Have a word to him. I don't think he's no What an imbecile. Try it. Mate, I just spent 10 minutes explaining not to swim here. <coughs> and he takes him straight into where I told him not to. Hey, buddy. Don't worry about it. I explained to you, mate. Don't go in there. He's trying to talk his way out of it. Oh, he was too, too cool with two chicks, that's all. Oh, I just had to calm H down. He was just going to rip his head off. <laughs> I had to give him a big hug. Oh, I gave him a big man hug. You did a good rescue, mate. You know, once the rescue's done, it's, it's good just to walk away. You've done your job, just got to walk away. Don't get into a fight with anyone. So, well, I went back in the water with the kids and I couldn't pull them up and come back up. So we just might have to put you on a spot and I'll take it for us. Canadian tourist Sean was dumped by a wave and slammed head first into the sand. How's that feel? If he's broken any bones, sudden movement could leave the father of two crippled. Terminal lifeguards, can you call us an ambulance? Sean's wife is unaware her husband has suffered a neck injury. Is your, is your mum here? <laughs> yeah. My mum's like on the beach. Yeah, you might have, you to, might go have to go get, get your mum. But Sean's neck might be the least of his worries on the family's dream holiday. Sure, my wife's going to be great, huh? This was our only day at the beach. Fell around Yeah, now I'm going down there. Finally, Sean's wife arrives. What's going on? You always have to do this when we're on vacation. Run this off. Get in. Get in. He's injured. Anyway. Is that your wife? Yes, yes, yes. Your wife. She speaks. That's his f***ing problem. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, hey, it's not my fault. No, it's not your fault at all. His wife is unimpressed. Maxi steps in as peacemaker. Calm down a little bit, darling. What happens? You're on bloody vacation. Yeah, I know you're on vacation. Just leave her cool down. She's off her head. Is she? Yeah. yeah. Is she? Do we need another ambulance for the wife? I don't know, maybe. What I but Maxie may have bitten off more than he can chew. I've been shaken up for two years like this, okay? So don't tell me he's shaken up. I might give you something just to uh, stop you vomiting on the way. Maxi is concerned Sean may need special protection. The cop is hanging around too, mate, so really? if she, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if she, if, she, if she carries on. Now Chapo tries to calm the situation. I'll explain it all to you. It's just that he might have done a little bit of spinal cord damage. No, no, he hasn't done any spinal cord damage. No, he might have done that. And if we don't do this, it'll get worse. Cheerio, Dad. How am I supposed to go there? Taxi or... Are you serious? In Montreal, we go in the ambulance with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll sort it out. I think we'll be able to fit you in. Everyone going to be nice and calm? Yeah? All right. One, two, three. Up. He's going to make it, all right? It's not too serious. Come on. Uh, she was a piece of work. She's going to make the situation a zillion times worse if she carries on like a pork chop. She was. Come on, man. Where the f is he? <laughs> <laughs>